they come back and come back to the cardinal. Yeah, well, so what you're talking about is, is um, the physiological effects of, like, of a, a lower earth orbit and zero gravity and what effects that can have. So, yeah, that's, that's one of the biggest challenges that we have for long duration missions. And that's one of, one of the big scientific studies that they're doing on the space station is how to counteract those effects for counterfeiters. So, what happens is, um, as you're in zero gravity, you have a lot of fluid shift. And so, if I stand here, gravity is pulling my blood and the fluid is my body down, and zero gravity sort of floats up. Um, and so, the, like, your heart has to work less hard to pump it around because it's not quite the gravity to pump the blood up. Your bones, just me standing here, they are um, maintaining their bone density because they're getting load on the joints, load on the cells, and that causes them to, to maintain their strength and density. If you go up there and all of a sudden I'm not you know, in zero G, there is a cakewalk for them. I'm way overbuilt here. I'm over engineered in this situation. So you start your body sort of adapts to the environment. And if it doesn't need to have spent energy and strength and, and resources on maintaining a system, it sort of slumps off bone density, slow down. Muscle atrophy is a big one. Actually, a recent thing that they're finding is that a lot of astronauts are coming back from long duration flight, and the, the visual acuity is, is almost permanently changed and altered, so they can't see as well because of uh, shifts that effects are happening. So they figure out they're working on ways to affect some of this could be diet, certainly exercise is a big one. Um, and what kind of exercise, whether you're doing compression resistive training, whether you're doing cardiovascular training, they have an enormous amount of, of countermeasure exercise equipment out there to be able to do it. They'll, they'll, they'll schedule in anywhere from you know two hours to sometimes four hours a day of exercise just to maintain that state so they don't degenerate. Okay, so I'm going to shift gears a little bit and uh, sort of talk about um, something very recent. This happened Labor Day um, this year. There was um, a spacewalk that was that was um, scheduled to go out. What happened is um, the space station was designed and assembled knowing that it's going to be up there for a long time. There's going to be parts of it that are going to break, parts of it need to be changed out. So um, a lot of the different components were designed to be ORUable, which means on-orbit replaceable unit. So, this box here has a certain function in terms of the power architecture of the space station. When it breaks, like it did, we can go up there, drive a couple bolts, pull it off, get a new spare, put it down, and we restore the functionality. Um, and so this one, the particular failure here is the power was still running through this box, and it was feeding the rest of the space station, but um, we couldn't talk to it anymore. So we couldn't turn it off very well, we couldn't command to it, so we could get data from it very well. We knew it was working, but we need to be able to, to talk, we need to have calm telemetry to this system. So we had to change it out. So they went out to the spacewalk, they were going to do this along with a number of other tasks, but they figured this one would take about three hours. Um, and what they did is um, they went to go pull it off and um, they found that, that this bolt here um, started driving on need a lot more of the running torque was really high. And so it sort of felt like it was just getting caught up on a lot of, of um, resistance. I'm sure you guys, as you're turning your nuts and bolts, pulling more robots, you, you find sometimes you get a stripped or a cross-threaded screw and start to just grind out those threads. And what do you do in that case? Turn it harder, <laughs> right? Grind it out. Maybe you have to drill it out if, if you strip the head or something like that. Um, do you guys ever have to have like a tap and die? Yeah, where you have to go in and sort of recut the threads in the metal to make it work and you clean it all out and you do it. Like, well, so this one was, was grinding. We know it's grinding. We're able to get it off. We look inside and there's all this metal particulate in there. We're like, oh, that's not good. Um, and so we tried to, we said, okay, well, let's still get, get rid of this old one. We'll still get it out of the way. We brought the new one in. We tried to sort of wipe it off and clean it out in there. And uh, we had to get this box back on because basically one-fourth of the entire space station's loads are going through this box and we need to restore that. So we put the next one down. So we'll let's give it a shot. Turn the bolt and it goes, starts driving it in. And as, it, as that bolt drives in, it brings the whole box lower down towards what's called the cold plate in here. And as it drives in, it makes electrical connectors. And that's where you're getting your power transfer and your data to the box. That's, that's the functionality box. That's sort of the key success of, of, of knowing you got there. Well, it's driving in, the bolts grind up and stop. We can't get it. We tried backing the bolt out, trying to get in again, increasing the torque. It was going nowhere. 
So we basically put this tether on and said, we're leaving it, we're going to come back out another day as quick as we can. So they came inside and we had to figure out a way to, to fix that. But we can't fly up a new bolt, we can't fly up a new box, we don't have a tap and die for this. We don't have um, tools to clean out the, the junk in there, so we have to sort of um, serve a story of that. Who's seen Apollo, Apollo 11? Sorry, Apollo, Apollo 13. <laughs> yeah. right. It's Apollo 13, that scene where they sort of say, okay, the crew has this, and they throw yeah. those dot bumps and stuff up there, and they say, okay, they have to get this square peg is from Apollo. That's the last word what this is like. So here we're going to sort of go through a okay, recent challenge you can get, right? So this box is broken. Um, we need to get the power from these arrays, and it's going to channel that power through a circuit into, these, into this box. This is, this is where it is on this pulpit, where it pulled it off. We need to get to go into these, these connectors, and that's going to get fed down into all of your, all of your loads in the station. So your computers, your, your payloads, your exercise equipment, your um, environmental control systems, all of that is getting fed from boxes like these. Um, you have to feed those loads. Um, but, as I said, here's this. Here's a close-up of the bolt. This one is on the, the vehicle side. It's sort of the nut side of it. And here is the male thread part of it. And it's going in there, and, and that's, those, those things won't mate. So, this is where I said we threw everything on the table and said, what do they have up there? And we said, okay, let's build some tools. And this is where sort of the engineering geek just loves it. And, uh, you sort of have a team where they off and building back at JSC and they pull out, okay, they've got these tools, they've got this tape, they've got these zip ties, I'm sure you guys love zip ties, I'm sure those are used, those are used quite a bit, duct tape is always used in some places, so, um, yeah, we, we took advantage of that stuff. Um, so, there happened to be another spare inside of a different kind of box that had a different function, but it had a similar bolt, and so we took that, that box apart and pulled out that bolt, and it has the same thread pitch on there, so we had to use that, even though it's not a tap, I bet if we running in and out, running in and out, we could do it. We might cut out some metal a little bit, we can distribute some grease on there. So let's do that. Um, brush your teeth. We want to get that metal out of there. Let's get a toothbrush and sort of scrape out all that little bits of metal. Right? Um, and then, in some cases, when we're talking about metal burrs, though, I think a nylon toothbrush isn't going to get a lot of that out. So, so what would you want? You want to get out some of that, some stuck metal burrs, where it, how much you guys think what you want to stick in there? Just think of ideas you got. Whatever you might have in your garage there. How do you want to get out all that metal junk? Just the right ideas. Vacuum. Vacuum, vacuum, okay, good. Okay, we're already in vacuum, so that's not going to work because <laughs> there's already no gas here. But we can sort of do the reverse. We can blow it. Um, we'll blow it blow, you know, air gun. We did that. We have. Um, little uh, nitrogen cartridge, like a little pressurized little thing like this, and it had it's sort of meant for cleaning off electronic pins. You sort of go Ch -ch -ch, and sort of spray it off some gunk. We tried that, that was one thing. Good idea. Yes. Other ones? What else did you do? What? Magnets. Magnets. Yeah, you guys are thinking along the same lines we are. We need you on our team. Yes, yeah, so we had an idea of let's, let's stick a magnet in there. So we went, the Russians had this little bag, this little uh, toiletry kit or so. And sewn into the fabric of this bag is this little magnet thing so that they put things in there and zero-gene sticks and they'll get lost. We tore the bag apart, pulled up the magnet, did that work? And it would. Actually, that was one of the concepts we took pretty well at the end of it. We said, well, it doesn't buy us as much as some of the other things. We're going to do a great idea, but we can do a little bit better. So, another thing we ended up doing was um, we took essentially super high-gauge speaker wire um, and you cut it off and then you sort of peel back the insulation a little bit. And you take all those little metal wires in there and you just kind of mush them. Just lay them all out. And, uh, well, we put grease on the toothbrush. Um, to figure out about that. So don't mix up that toothbrush with your toothbrush. Um, but the other, things, the other thing we would do on this is, so, so with this, with that speaker wire all splayed out now, it makes a great brush. And this is going to be stiffer than that nylon on the toothbrush. We then sort of taped this onto the uh, drill bit, sort of, it's kind of sort of like a drill socket, and put that on a, on a power tool, and stuck down there and goes and pulls that, pulled out, pulls out a lot of the gun. So that's it in theory. So I sort of talked through the day of the EVA. I talked about um, uh, 
preparations for the day, you have to get the nitrogen out of your bloodstream um, because you want to try to make the partial pressure of oxygen in your bloodstream as high as possible. The reason for that is when you deep press down the back, you're only going to be at 4.3 psi total in that suit. Any nitrogen that's in there is going to start coming out of solution and forming gas bubbles within the solution there. As those travel through your joints, it sort of collects around um, areas in your joints and you, and you get the bend, basically decompression sink. So many of these scuba divers, it's the same principle there as, as if you uh, come up too fast um, out of the water, you go, if you depress down too fast, all that nitrogen's going to come out of the solution of your blood, you're going to decompression sink. So to, to prevent that, this is, uh, this is Sunny Williams, um, and she's wearing um, an aviation style oxygen mask. She's just pure, breathing pure oxygen, and through sort of, sort of the diffusion, it, the partial pressure of oxygen now in what she's breathing is much higher, so the nitrogen will sort of come out of solution of her blood. Um, and then they get in the suit, and they sit there in the suit for um, about 100 minutes. And during this time, they sort of continue to do this pre-breathe exercise. And it used to be, this is another area where we sort of evolved the, the science here. We used to have just four hours of you sitting there like this, just breathing the oxygen in the suit, trying to get all that nitrogen out. And we evolved it now, so what they do is they do just little exercises, literally like this. Doesn't seem like exercise. We do that over the course of 20 minutes, uh, 50 minutes, sorry, and that we tested that that promotes enough of a nitrogen washout that you're able to have an effective pre-breathe so you don't get don't get sick when you go outside. So you can see uh, this is Joe Acaba. He just landed a couple days ago. He's putting all the tools on what's called a main workstation. So a main workstation sits right here. It's basically a tool belt. It comes up and has a little T-bar right here with a lot of rings on it. You can stick the tools on it. You can now hold everything and have access to it when you need to. Um, safety tethers, this is a big reel here. Sort of like a, people have a dog, we have a dog leash and has a little retracting reel in there. Imagine that with an 85 foot steel cable. So you can lock that onto a handrail here. You can now go way over here. And if you let go, if you make a mistake and you fall off, not a good day, but you're not going into your own orbit. You're going to come back to this point or come back to structure somewhere. You're going to um, some of the things that they have. So then, um, this is uh, Aki Hoshide, who, who is uh, Sunny's partner, going out. He's, um, here he is with his boots into the foot restraint here. We stuck the foot restraint on top of the robotic arm. Um, and so now he can ride on that robotic arm, and that arm can fly him around to different places on the space station to get right in front of the work site where he needs to go. Here's a little bag he has, which has a, the toothbrush in it, has the wire brush caddy in it, and so forth. Gets him down. A, take the gas and they clean it out, they take the toothbrush and they put some grease in there, they take the wire and they clean it out, they put the new box on, turn the bolt and it goes down and you can touch the sun at that point. So, all right. That's all I have for the presentation, I know I won't be long, but um, I also want to get you guys a chance to come up here and, and see the hardware. There's a couple of rules here. Um, first of all, if anyone has any rings or jewelry on their hands, um, take it off, just because it here. Um, don't put this on um, because we don't want it worn by a lot of people. Um, but you can put your hands into gloves. Um, that's okay. This is the, we're going to call it the fancy nasty, the mag or maximum absorption uh, garment. <laughs> um, okay. Here's sort of another one of those for MacGyver moments. This is for EVAs. 10 years ago or so, the Russians had these thruster nozzles and they were, we thought they were leaving this uh, very toxic fuel residue around the nozzle right where we need, need, need to translate. If you touch that on your hand and bring it inside, you're not going to get everyone sick. So this is sort of a swab tester. We took a towel and just sort of wrapped this wire around it, designed a little tool and said, hey, go out there and get a little swab and see if it's still there. Just so can... Here's um, one of the test toothbrushes of the crew that the folks on the ground were using to sort of come up with it, the concept there. The wire brush. This is um, this is actually sort of the goal here. This is a uh, clone tile from um, from Colombia, um, but it, this wasn't recovered after the accident. This was um, during a maintenance um, in 1990. 
this one, um, if, if when, you, when people are ready to see this, I can talk them through that. We won't need to make sure that the only touches it has on um, latex gloves, um, just for material safety. And so we'll sort of maybe get to that towards the end. But uh, when people will come up and sort of ask questions and put hands on the hardware and touch things and ask how it works. And so we'll see. Um, so, you aren't assembling all those parts there, they'll launch them like this, and so when you get up into the, get you get up into the torso and you get your arms through there, they'll sort of just pull them on and click them in place and it takes a minute. So. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> 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 <laughs>